What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Woods and Waters of Kentucky. I'm out in the shop, out here messing around in the boat. I'm gonna be doing a video on tackle storage. Um, the days of using these are over with. I got a new product I want to show y'all. It's you can put whatever you want in them, but I'm primarily going to put soft plastics in them. But they're just basically the same thing as a ziplock bag, only way better. It's got a zipper at the top, and it's made out of real thick plastic, real durable, real, real tough stuff. We're we'll going to get into that in a minute. Yeah, the days of using Ziploc bags are over with. I'll go ahead and throw these, throw this where it belongs. All right, so I'm gonna try to get this done before my phone dies. My battery's only on like 20%, so hopefully it'll hold up long enough to make this video. This is what we got going on down here, and my, I should have vacuumed the boat out before I did this, but oh well. So I got all my shad imitating lures or minnow style lures in this bag. Got some, some freeloaders. Of course, need to restock. Got the uh, missile bait. That really shouldn't be in there. Oh, got some more freeloaders. Paddle tail swim baits. Another paddle tail. Flukes. Uh, Zaco, however you pronounce that. Zaco, Zaco. Some more. A pack of flukes. Some more Gary Yamamoto's, Zaco's. They're not really a paddle tail or fluke style. They're just their own little soft plastic shad imitating bait. I'm really excited about these right here. I think that's a good looking bait. It's a gizzard shad pattern. Just a little pack of cheap stuff. We got some gillies made by Berkeley. Got the little bit bigger ones. I don't know how long they are. They're like a three and a half to four inch bait and then these are probably like a two and a half to three inch a little bit smaller here's an old school bait that I've yet to try if anybody's ever thrown that it's a hyper hyperlastics dead alive swimmer And of course, we got the Berkeley Nessie. I've yet to throw it too. But I'm keeping all those kind of baits together in here. That way, it just cuts down so much time on. So next up, we got creature baits. Got all my creature baits in this bag. Live fishing, y'all. Live fishing. You know, we got some sweet, some sweet beavers. I don't know, that's a, 
kind of a beaver style bait. Reaction Innovations. Zoom Baby Brush Hog. Sixth Sense Prawn. Havoc Pit, Pit Boss. I have several Zoom Brush Hogs. Tilapia Magic, Watermelon Red, Green Pumpkin Red, Green Pumpkin, Watermelon Seed. Here's the limited edition Cajun Crawl Brush Hog. But yeah, keep all my Creature baits in that one. And speaking of creature baits, this is a new one I'm kind of excited about. Made by Riot Baits. It's a fin finesse type creature bait. I guess I could take one out of the pack for y'all real quick. So I've never had one out of the pack yet myself. But it's kind of, uh, you know, it's a skinnier profile bait. That's why it's more of a finesse, considered to be a finesse creature bait. But your appendages, you can pull them off and they've got, you know, the little flaps on them that kind of make them work like a rage crawl or a adrenaline crawl or something you know makes them kick a lot puts off a lot of action but you got your about the same size as a uh, zoom it's, i can't remember what it's called i've got I've got one in here let me find it so this is my bag of crawls Yeah, speed crawl. It's about the size of a, a Zoom speed crawl. But I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna try it out soon. Just have yet to use them. I don't have a whole lot of crawls, so I'm not even gonna bother. I had several and me and my son, we've used, we went through a bunch of them the spring and summer, but so so far we got shad imitating baits, creature baits, crawls, and then uh, I've separated. I got three different types of worms for these bags here. I've got the ten-inch worms, whether it's a ribbon tail or straight tail or a paddle tail. If it's ten to twelve inches, it's going in this bag. Large, large worms. Uh, Cinco style worms, cigar worms, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, stick worms is what I like to call them, but yeah, I keep them all in here. And then last but not least, we've got finesse worms in this one. I don't have a lot of Ned, Ned, Ned rig worms yet. I haven't really gotten into that, but there might be some trick worms in here too, maybe, but mainly just finesse worms. All right, moving on, moving on. Live fishing, y'all, give it a try. It's we got some, some nice stuff. I may look into getting some 
rod sleeves. They look like they got some really nice rod sleeves, but it ain't like buying the standard rod sleeve. They're a little bit more expensive. They, they ain't like those El Cheapos. They're a little bit more expensive rod sleeve. So I'm trying to step my game up a little bit on this whole tackle storage deal. And I've come a long way. It's a lot better than it was. Yeah, I've made a lot of improvements. It's actually starting to look a little bit better than it did. But mainly in this one, I keep jigs and chatterbaits. If I'm in a hurry, I might throw a spinnerbait in there. But, you know, that type of stuff. And then this other one. I don't have very many in there now because my son's been using them and losing them, but mainly jerk baits, rattle traps, lipless, lipless crank baits, blade baits, that type of thing. Damn, it's not me to do that. Uh, let's see, we got some Crappie hooks, jig head hooks. Never know when you're going to run up on a big school of crappie. Keep the majority of my hooks in this one, whether it's shaky head or jig head or just any type of hook. I'll just throw it in there. This is my son's tackle box. It's got all the cheaper cheaper hooks and cheaper sinkers in it. If I run out of tungsten, I'll steal one of his out of here. Here's another one of them. Well, they're kind of both of ours. Some of these baits in here are mine, some of them are his. That, that buzz bait's mine, that frog's mine, that chartreuse crank bait's mine. But he's got he's got some baits in here too, so gotta watch him like a hawk. Make sure he don't steal them. Some spoons. Now I did have my soft plastics in here. I had uh, ribbon tail and paddle tail worms in here, as you can as you can see. But this has just kind of turned into a little miscellaneous box for me, just on the go. Instead of throwing it in the floor, I'll throw it in there. And same deal, had soft plastics in here at one time. Now it's just one of those, putting a little bit of everything in here. Shaky head hook, mainly stuff still in the package. Swim, swim bait hooks, drop shot, EWGs, more drop shots. EWGs, more shaky heads, more EWGs, jig hooks, and last but certainly not least, trimmer head hooks. Love these. These things are awesome. You can put a uh, soft plastic shad imitating lure on there. It don't matter if it's a fluke or a paddle tail, I don't care what it is. You put something like on there, throw it out, let it hit the bottom, reeled in real slow, it's gonna get bit. Yeah, I love, love these trimmer, trimmer head hooks. And we got some top quality worm hooks. All right, next. We've got a umbrella rig in here and a spinnerbait and some paddle tails some terminal tackle got some old school crankbaits when I say old school I mean old school
tail benders made by Hedden. You just don't never know. Sometimes on them highly pressured lakes, they just get pounded to death with all this new, all these new baits. You never know. Sometimes them old school baits will get bit and nothing else will. Yeah. One time I had my 10 inch worms in here. Now it's just kind of turned into a whatever box. Got the new credge. You have to throw that. Some more paddle tail swim baits. There's your sexy dog junior top water. Love that bait. Caught a lot of fish on that bait. Another. I had the package for that one somewhere. I just didn't feel like going through the trouble. There's just a rage crawl trailer. Big old crank, buzz bait. All right, now, top water. What else we got in here? Got a couple Guggen brand Whopper Ploppers. It's not a true Whopper Plopper, but you know what I mean. Oh, and I caught my PB on this. I caught a six pounder on that. That's I've yet to catch one bigger. Caught that one back at the honey hole. Another sexy dog. Got some more poppers and frogs in here. Let's see, got a bunch of crankbaits in here. Nothing but cranks. Some odds and ends, there's a lighter and jig hook. Another lighter, you know, it's the only lighter. Just another, some random stuff in there. Got my digital scales in here. And in here we got some random stuff. And this is what I got to figure out. I want, I think I just need to get me a smaller tote because this one takes up a little bit more room than I would like. Because by the time I put all those in here I don't have much room for these and you can you can tell where I've already I've already scuffed up the back of this bag trying to pull it out there because it's all wedged in there so tight but I think I just need to get a smaller tote because I keep you know all my line in here mainly uh maybe a couple spare a couple spare reels some scent some more scent you know stuff that you never know you're going to need there's a rod tip repair kit Once we got the kentucky Boating guide, extra spinner bait, more line. I mean, you just never know when you're going to need some of this stuff. And of course, right in here is a very busy area. You know, we got our we got our main big pliers. We got our dikes in case somebody gets a hook in them. A couple different pairs of scissors. Some forceps. We got a pair of uh, needle nose that's made to work on split rings. 
And we got one of these in case we catch a toothy critter. But yeah, mainly that's what I got to figure out, guys. I got to, I got to, I think, and I think I just need to get a smaller tote to go in there. One about half that size and then I'll be in pretty good shape. Um, or something. Because right now, whether depending on whether I want to get to those baits or these baits, one or the other has to come out. And what I've been doing, I'll show you what I've been doing. What I've been doing is pretty much just throwing these right here before I ever start fishing. And then if something comes up and I need a particular bait, I don't have to pull all these boxes out of here due to the fact that these are in the way because they're not in the way any longer. And that's kind of worked out pretty good for me, but I'm just tired tired of doing that. I, I don't really want to have all these out. But I mean, it's if you're struggling to figure the fish out and you're having to change lures or colors or whatever, it's it is a good way to do it because you just grab it and go. But yeah, got all this back in there and. Just got to figure out the best thing to do with some of this stuff. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section if you got any tips or advice on tackle storage. I'd appreciate it. And until then, y'all have a good one. Appreciate you.